late. The drinking of tea with some food stopped her from feeling hungry. Soon she started inviting other ladies to join her in the afternoon. Meeting with friends has become an important part of afternoon tea. As tea became popular around the world, more countries began to grow it. Major tea producing areas are China, India, and Sri Lanka. The most common varieties of tea are black, green, and oolong. They all come from the same tea plant, but are processed differently. Tea is usually drunk hot. Black tea can be served plain, but sometimes milk, sugar, or lemon are added to it. In some countries, such as India, spices are used to make masala tea. In Egypt, sugar and mint leaves are used to make traditional tea. People in Russia like their tea sweet and use jam or honey. Green tea and oolong tea are traditionally drunk without adding anything. They can also be drunk cold. Iced tea has become a popular drink in many countries, especially during the hot summer months. It is said that iced tea was developed by accident. At the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis, USA, a trader was preparing hot tea samples. There was little interest in his tea because the weather was so hot. Without thinking, he put ice into his hot tea, and so the idea of iced tea was born. With each new generation of tea drinkers, and as more people travel the world, new combinations of tea drinks are being made. Herbal teas have also become popular. Sometimes they are mixed with fruit and spices. Research today has also shown that some types of tea, like green tea, are very good for you. Man shoots up post office. A 36-year-old man stormed into the Ramona post office, yelling at everyone to get out of his way. Carrying a shotgun, he climbed up onto the countertop and told everyone to lie on the floor. Then he pulled the trigger and fired around into the ceiling. Plaster splattered onto the floor and the customers. The man ordered all the customers and employees to sit up and look at him. He said, Repeat after me, I hate the post office. Everyone repeated the words. He fired another round, but this one he aimed at the front plate glass window. Shattered glass went everywhere. Three minutes later, Five police cars pulled up in front of the post office, lights flashing and sirens wailing. Using a bullhorn, a police officer told the man to walk out backwards with his hands up. The man fired another blast out the shattered window. The police officer and his bullhorn were uninjured. However, one police car had three little pit marks in it. The man yelled, I'm not coming out until the post office pays me for pain and suffering. A postal truck ran into my car two years ago. My back is killing me. I can't work anymore. My wife left me. I can't take it anymore. After a while, the man calmed down. 
He released all the people inside. At 7 p.m., the man walked out backwards with his hands up. The police handcuffed him, put him in the back seat of a car, and drove him to the police station. A post office official said that they had tried to settle with the man out of court, but he refused anything less than a million dollars. So the whole thing went to court, he said. I guess he got tired of waiting for the trial to begin. He'll probably go to jail for a few years because of this stunt. Pretty Teacher Has Other Plans The annual teachers meeting was the only time that all the teachers got together in one place at one time. It was a three-hour meeting from 7 to 10 p.m. Lecturers talked on various subjects. Each talk was followed by a question and answer period. It was an informal, pleasant evening. The evening always began with a delicious dinner catered by a local restaurant. This year's host was a Middle Eastern restaurant. Teachers piled as much as they wanted on their paper plates and found a seat outdoors or in the auditorium. Most teachers really seemed to appreciate the food. For Shane, this evening was his opportunity to check out the female teachers. This year, a beauty walked into the auditorium about ten minutes late. She sat in the row in front of Shane, just two seats away. Shane couldn't believe it. She was not only the best-looking woman in the auditorium, but she smiled at him before she sat down. She was tall and had long red hair. She was wearing a sexy black cocktail dress. Shane could not focus on the meeting any more. He looked at the lecturers less than he looked at the redhead. He was enveloped in her perfume. She took notes right-handed. She ran her fingers through her hair. She crossed and uncrossed her legs. Shane was going crazy. Plus, there was no ring on her left hand. The meeting ended. The dean thanked everyone for attending. Everybody applauded the presenters. The redhead stood up. Shane stood up. She smiled at him and then walked out. Shane walked out. She went to the restroom. Shane waited. When she came out, he walked up to her. Hi, he smiled. My name's Shane. I was wondering if you have time for a cup of coffee. I was hoping we could share some of our teaching experiences. She smiled. Why, thank you. That's sweet of you. I appreciate your offer, but I've got to get home. My husband is babysitting tonight, and I'm sure he's pretty tired. Maybe another time? She smiled and walked away. A hot dog sandwich. Gordon was hungry. He opened the refrigerator. There must be something in here to eat, he thought. There was a single hot dog. He took it out of its package and put a small frying pan onto the stove's gas burner. He turned on the heat. Then he poured a little bit of vegetable oil into the pan. He sliced the hot dog in half lengthwise. When the oil got hot, he put the two halves in the pan. About a minute later, he flipped each half over. After another minute, he took the hot dog out of the pan. Gordon put two slices of bread into the toaster. This was tasty and healthy bread. The first ingredient listed was organic sprouted wheat. The first ingredient in ordinary bread is usually unbleached flour. When the toast popped up, 
He put mustard, mayonnaise, and ketchup on one slice. Then he added two slices of onion. On top of the onions, he placed the hot dog. On top of the hot dog, he put a couple of slices of apple. Then he added some bits of hot green chili, and then put the top piece of toast onto the chili bits. Ah, what a sandwich, he thought as he sat down to eat. Everyone loves bananas. What a wonderful fruit the banana is, popular all over the world. Its three colors tell you how ripe it is. Green means go, as in go find another banana. Yellow means eat me. Brown means eat me, but don't bother chewing before you swallow. The only thing that would make a banana more user-friendly is if you could eat the peel. Plus, a banana is neat to eat. When you bite into it, you don't have to worry about juice squirting all over yourself and your dinner neighbors, like oranges or grapefruit, for example. And it's a silent food. You can chew it all you like without driving your neighbors crazy with crunching sounds, like apples or carrots, for example. Finally, it's easy to cut. You don't need a steak knife. You can slice it with a fork or a spoon if you like. You're never too young or too old to eat bananas. Babies eat mashed bananas before their teeth grow in. Great-great-grandparents eat mashed bananas after their teeth fall out. The banana is versatile. You can fry it, bake it, mash it, or eat it raw. You can slice it and put it on your breakfast cereal. At lunchtime, you can snack on a raw banana, or make a peanut butter and banana sandwich, or eat a bag of dried bananas. You can add a banana to your ice cream for dessert, and call it a banana split. You can order a healthful banana smoothie at your local smoothie store. On weekends, you can order a banana daiquiri at your local bar or restaurant. Here in the U.S., we get most of our bananas from Ecuador and Costa Rica, although the fruit reportedly originated in Asia. Bananas give us lots of potassium and vitamins A and C and hardly any sodium. The price of bananas hasn't changed much over recent years. They're still about 65 cents a pound, despite rising gas and labor prices. If that's too expensive, you can still get three pounds for a buck at many dollar stores. Hospitals can make you sick. About 100,000 people die each year in U.S. hospitals from infections that they get while they're in the hospital. Less than half that many die on U.S. highways. The hospital deaths are due to poor housekeeping and poor hygiene. Floors, walls, and doors are not cleaned regularly or thoroughly. Room dividers are almost never cleaned. The carts that carry food trays and the trays themselves are usually contaminated from handling and coughing. Cooks and other food handlers can easily infect the food by not washing properly after using the bathroom. Doctors and nurses are just as guilty as other staff. Doctors rarely clean their stethoscopes after each patient. Nurses apply blood pressure cuffs to patient after patient without cleaning the cuffs. Doctors often put on gloves without washing their hands first. As a result, the germs on their hands are transferred to the outside of the gloves. 
Consumer groups warn patients that they must demand cleanliness. If they see or suspect unsanitary conditions, they must tell someone immediately. It could be a matter of life or death. But, as one patient said, no way. You don't tell your boss that he has bad breath, and you don't tell your doctor that he needs to wash his hands. Influenza, or the flu, attacks up to 1 billion people annually. In the U.S., it kills 20,000 annually, most of whom are children or elderly. Occasionally, the flu becomes pandemic. In 1918, it killed 20 million people worldwide. The flu is a very contagious viral infection spread through the air by coughing, sneezing, or simply talking. It is not caused by getting caught in a rainstorm or by sleeping with a fan or air conditioning on. The incubation period is about three days. It doesn't sneak up on you like a cold does. All of a sudden you feel weak. You have a high fever, you have chills, you cough frequently and forcefully, your throat is sore, and your body aches. For most adults, the treatment is to simply wait it out. Stay home, get lots of bed rest, drink lots of fluids, and take over-the-counter medications such as aspirin, painkillers, and nasal decongestants. Symptoms usually go away within two weeks. For the elderly and young, the initial viral infection may become a bacterial infection with deadly consequences because the victim becomes too weak to battle the disease. The death rate for the general population is about 1 in 1,000. Those most susceptible to severe effects of the flu are people over 65 and people with chronic heart or lung problems, such as asthma. Flu season in the U.S. is usually December to March. The best prevention, of course, is to stay away from infected people. Since that is almost impossible, the next best preventive strategy is to get an annual flu shot. This vaccine reduces the number of people who get infected and who die yearly. The Way to a Man's Heart He was her university teacher. He was smart, confident, and had a great sense of humor. And he was rather good-looking, too. The fact was, she had fallen in love with him. She sensed that he might like her. She had caught him looking at her more than once. What to do? At the end of the semester, she waited till all the other students had left. She said she had a gift for him. He said that was very nice of her. Then he looked around for a wrapped package. Where was the gift, he asked. She said it was still at the store. She would pick him up and take him there that Saturday if that was okay with him. She picked him up at the Starbucks near his apartment. He was enjoying the mystery. He asked her, Was it an alarm clock so that he wouldn't be late for class? Was it teaching materials like markers and erasers, a new briefcase, an extra ink cartridge for his computer, for when he printed handouts? She said that she couldn't comment. They got to the mall and went into Nordstrom's. I hope it isn't a suit, he joked. I never wear suits. No, it isn't, but it's something that you always wear with a suit. A tie? Why would I wear a tie if I never wear suits? Not a tie, silly, she said as they walked into the shoe department. She had noticed that he always wore the same pair of shoes in class. She had guessed that he wore size 11 and had picked out a nice two-tone casual model by Clark. 
She hoped that he would like the shoes as much as she did. The shoes fit perfectly, and he did like them. When they left the store, he offered her his hand, and they walked out to her car hand in hand. She was tingling. Let me at least buy you dinner, he suggested as they got into her car. I love motorcycles. Jay was born to ride. Just after learning to walk, he got his first tricycle. A year later, he was on a bicycle with training wheels. At the age of five, he was a skilled bicyclist, able to jump off ramps and fly through the air. His father made sure he did everything safely. Jay wore a helmet, a chest pad, elbow pads, and knee pads. He fell a lot, but he was never hurt badly. He got his first motorcycle when he was seven. His father put the motorcycle in the back of his pickup and drove Jay out to the desert almost every weekend. Jay became a skilled rider. He entered motocross races all over the county. By the time he was fifteen, he had won thirty races. His future looked bright. When he was seventeen, Jay took his girlfriend out for a ride on his motorcycle. A truck ran a red light, and Jay and his girlfriend crashed into the side of the truck. Jay went into the hospital for three months. His girlfriend died immediately. Jay didn't ride a motorcycle again for ten years. Then one weekend, he bought a used Kawasaki. He took it out for a test run at dusk. It felt good to ride again. He got it up to a hundred and ten miles an hour on the local freeways. A highway patrol car chased him for about ten minutes, but he finally lost it in the freeway traffic in the dark. When he got home, he was excited. That was fun, he thought. She loves her son. Maria had to buy food for herself and her son. Divorced for ten years, she was used to doing the shopping for her son. He was a junior in high school, which meant that he would be entering college in two years. Then she would be shopping only for herself. She felt sad when she thought of this. She hoped. That he would attend the local junior college, and then transfer to a university. That way, he could continue to live at home for another two years. She loved him and dreaded the day that he would no longer be her daily company. Maria drove to Costco, a chain store that sold food in bulk packages. By selling in bulk only. The store helps its customers save money. She parked far from the entrance, that meant a longer walk, but also a faster exit from the parking lot. She grabbed one of the big shopping carts outside, and pushed it into the store. Her purse stayed tightly hung over her shoulder. Surprisingly, the store wasn't too crowded. In the produce section, she examined nine packages of seedless green grapes before she found one that she liked. She carefully selected some bananas, apples, and other fruit, but she couldn't find her son's favorite brand of tangerines. On the way home, she planned to stop at another market or two until she found them.